Noreen and welcome to my snowy kitchen. This is what it looks like in Eastern North Carolina on Wednesday morning, January 29th. We got about three to four inches of snow over between yesterday afternoon and today. It's got a lovely layer of ice underneath it and I couldn't be happier. This is very unusual for this um, area and they haven't had snow like this in a very long time. My kids had a snow day yesterday, they have a snow day today, and they'll probably have a snow day tomorrow. But today we're gonna make some cranberry orange scones to get the morning going, and I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. So join me and I'll show you how I make these. and we're gonna move everything over, bring in the mixer, and I'm gonna show you how I put these together. They're super simple, very similar to how I made my cranberry white chocolate scones, except we have a few different ingredients. This is my favorite basic scone recipe. You can add anything to this that you like. It doesn't have to be cranberry orange. You can run the gamut. What we're gonna start with is about four cups of flour. Well, it is four cups of flour. It's not about four cups of flour. Four cups of flour, one eight ounce brick of cream cheese that is cold and that I have cut and broken into small pieces. One half cup or one stick of butter that I have cut into small cubes. We're going to use a half a cup of sugar, one egg, the zest of one uh, orange, and that's about a tablespoon. That's one tablespoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. And then we're also gonna use about a cup of dried cranberries and these were very very old so I plumped them um, in a little hot water with some orange juice in there because I have some amazing navel oranges that I bought right off the citrus growers truck the other day and then we're going to use also for flavoring we're going to use some vanilla I'm going to use my Fiore di Sicilia which is a equivalent to Italian Millifiore and if you're familiar with that it's floral it's kind of a combination between orange flower water and rose water um, but um, it's really um, vanilla and orangey and beautiful but if you don't have that you can just use vanilla and orange extracts mix knock same thing and it'll be delicious so we're going to move everything we're going to top everything off with a brush of heavy cream a sprinkle of crystal sugar and we're going to move everything out of the way and bring the mixer in so I can show you how this is made we're going to get started um, there is our flour. I'm going to go ahead and put my paddle attachment on and then we're going to go ahead and put in the baking powder and the salt and the sugar and the orange zest and I'm going to turn it on low and I'm going to lift my bowl up so it starts to mix. All right. Just get this mixed in there really just give it a couple of turns. Just so you can get everything incorporated really well. Then in goes the butter and the cream cheese. And I cut mine up on parchment so that it would be easier to um, put in the bowl. And for sure, it is easier to put in the bowl. And less little waste there. All right. I'm going to turn this on. You can cut fat into flour in your mixer if you do it on a low speed and you don't do it for too long. So I'm going to put it on low and I'm going to let this cut in and I'll bring you back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I forgot to tell you that you're going to need a quarter of a cup of milk or cream. I also have in here the cream along with an egg, the egg, and I'm going to, you know, just kind of whisk this together really quick. And then we're going to get ready to um, add that to our dry mixture. We've completed cutting the butter and cream cheese into the flour and it looks just like it should because you'll see it looks and if you do that it holds together and that's exactly how you want it. It looks very grainy like a coarse cornmeal and that's exactly how you want it and there's still some bigger chunks of fat in there and that's fine because that's going to give you the flakiness that you want in this scone. Okay so what we're also going to add at, to the milk and the cream at this point I'm going to add my Fiore, and that I'm very stingy with. You need so little. I literally had this bottle for, oh, five years. It cost $20. It was worth every penny, but you only need about an eighth of a teaspoon. And I'm also going to give me 
give me, listen to me, about a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna toss in a tablespoon of orange juice and I'm gonna give this all a really good whisk. Okay, we just want that to be mixed really well. Whoops. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn the mixer on low. We're gonna add in our cranberries. I'm gonna get my hands in there. I like to mix these in before I put the liquid in because I want them to get covered with the flour mixture so that they separate nicely. Now my cranberries are a little bit moist, so that's why it's gonna take just a minute or so before they mix well. Now I'm gonna to start to drizzle my cream and egg mixture in here. And then we're just gonna let this turn for a, just less than a minute. We just want it to come together. Just like that. We don't want to overmix it, otherwise you'll end up with a tough biscuit. Because technically that's what a scone is. It's just a biscuit. And um, only it's a delicious and buttery, flaky, flavorful biscuit that you can add so many things to. So, let's see. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to take the bowl off and I'm going to move the mixer out of the way and we'll be right back. Okay, we have uh, moved our dough out of the bowl and I'm just going to give it a turn or two here on the board and then I'm going to show you how I like to shape my scones because I'm really picky and I like them to be nice and even so I've come up with a way that works for me to get a nice even scone. Now what I like to do is just kind of push it and then fold it just like you're going to do with a biscuit because this is going to create nice layers. Okay. What I like to do is I have a quarter sheet pan and I'm going to go ahead and grab my misto just because I want to make sure this is going to release. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a spray just like that. And then I'm going to take this dough and I'm going to press it into this pan as evenly as possible. Okay, then I'm gonna make sure that I have enough flour down here and I'm gonna just flip this over, just like that. This is just assisting me to get an even scone. That's all it's doing. So I'm gonna wash my hands real quick and I'll come back and we'll cut these up. Okay, I've gone ahead and, you know, I have to be honest with you, I use a ruler. Mark laughs at me. I used a ruler because this is eight and a half inches by 12 inches. So I divided it thusly into eight equal pieces. And then what I like to do is just cut these into triangles. Just like this. Every cook should have a ruler in their kitchen and I might go so far as to say you should have a metal ruler in your kitchen because you can wash it. Okay, now you can take it a step further if you like. You can actually make these into mini scones and you can cut them each into four segments. But since these are really just for breakfast, I'm not gonna go that far. But if you were going to do these for, like, um, if you were going to have a brunch or something and you were going to have several different items that you were serving, like on a buffet or something, then I would definitely cut these into smaller pieces. Because they're rich and they're buttery and um, when you cut them smaller, they're just the perfect little mouthful. And you can just put these on your baking sheet just like this. However they fit, there's really no science to it at all. You just put them where they fit. They're going to rise a little bit. So we're gonna try and fit them all on here. I got these all arranged and now I'm just gonna take a little bit of heavy cream and a pastry brush and I'm gonna brush the tops. I have my oven preheated at 400 degrees and 
After we get these brushed, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sprinkle on some crystal sugar. If you don't have crystal sugar, don't worry. You can use turbinado sugar. You can use um, regular granulated sugar. You can use no, no sugar at all. You don't have to use anything. And then we sprinkle. And if you sprinkle from a little bit of a height, then you get a little better coverage. In the oven, these go. Remember, 400 degrees. We're going to bake these for 18 minutes, and when they're ready to come out, I'll come back and I'll show you what they look like. All right. We have had these in the oven for about 20 minutes. I checked them at 15, and they just weren't done enough. So now they are done, and they're perfect. They're just a little bit soft. Now we're going to let them cool because we're going to have some carryover cooking. We're going to let these cool, and then we'll bring you back when it's time to eat some delicious cranberry orange scones. We're all ready to have scones for breakfast, and these are incredibly delicious. They melt in your mouth, they taste of orange and cranberry, they're buttery, they're crunchy on the top, and they're fluffy and beautiful. I'm going to break one open so you can see. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. You can see the flecks of the orange zest that we put in there, and those pieces of moist cranberry that I plumped uh, in the hot water and orange juice, and they're absolutely delicious. Do you want to taste it? Sure. Here. Wow. Mm. That was really good. You don't need butter or jam or anything. But a little clotted cream would never hurt either. So that is how you make delicious cranberry orange scones anytime. I hope that you try these and I hope that you love them. And remember you can get the recipe on my website at noreenskitchen.com. Please remember to like, rate, comment, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss out on one minute of all the fun we have here in my kitchen. Until next time, I'll see ya. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you learned something and I hope you're going to give it a try and I hope that you love it. I know that you will. I also wanted to say if you're new to my channel, I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the fun we have here in our kitchen. And also you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus, and also on my blog over at blogger.com. There will be links to all of those things in the information bar below. So I hope that you all have a great day and make sure that you come back tomorrow. I'll see ya.